crisis response plans. Uh-oh, something bad happened on social media. What does this look like? Yikes. Taco Bell. Employee leaking people's tacos. Hamburger place. Man taking a nap on your hamburger buns. No bueno. This one on the right is actually at a Burger King. So, you need to have a policy for something like this when it happens. Social media policy outlines how an organization and its employees should conduct themselves online. So, this is basically one of two ways that this can happen. Something can happen to your social media where somebody goes rogue and posts something under your business. Or, one of your employees can do something like this. Either way, it's going to go viral and you need to be able to respond. So, social media policy outlines how an organization and its employees should conduct themselves online. This document helps safeguard your brand's reputation while also encouraging employees to responsibly share the company's message. That's up front. Um, it needs to be a living document that's updated regularly because, quite frankly, the world changed quickly. Especially when you're talking about social media. Now, what are the benefits of having a social media policy? It protects a company's reputation, helps employees understand how to use social media to promote the brand, creates brand consistency, prevents companies from being held liable for what employees say and do on social media. It helps to manage the employee conduct as well. Now, your social media policy should include seven things. Rules and regulations, confidentiality, potential legal risks, security risks, brand guidelines, roles and responsibilities, and accountability. Uh, we're going to roll through these in the next few slides. So, the first one is rules and regulations. That's the expectations for appropriate employee behavior and conduct. It is brand guidelines, how to use the brand, how not to use the guy brand, and it sets what's proper etiquette and engagement. Now, if you did a quick... Um, Google search of a social media policy, you can find numerous examples, and the first thing is the rules and regulations. Secondly, confidentiality. Define what information should never be shared on social media. What is inappropriate? Um, you can include things like, uh, we don't need to be putting our financial figures on there. We don't need to share too much information because it can get us in trouble for insider trading. Uh, we don't need to put plans out there for rebranding and acquisition, etc. So some company strategy. What information is meant to be internal versus external audiences? you got to be really careful because all this is generally in electronic form and all it takes is one copy and paste and it's on the internet for everyone to consume. So be careful. Third, potential legal risk. What's the properly, how do we properly credit sources? Okay, how do we... You know, not steal from someone. It's kind of like plagiarism in academics. You, you, it's plagiarism in the real world, too, if you steal like a poem from someone and put it on your social media like it's yours. That's a problem. Privacy and disclosure procedures. Um, you know, do we give away our customers' information? Hopefully not, right? What? How do we disclose things about the company? We need to... You open yourself up to some legal action if you put people's personal information out there or a picture of them that you don't have permission to share or anything like that. Um, any kind of employee disclaimers um, that you don't feel comfortable getting out in the public. So what about security risk? Number four, educate employees on the threats and actions that they can take. Um, create secure passwords, avoid threats, try to you know avoid getting hacked. Um, uh, and you need to respond, and how are you going to respond to security breaches? Um, one of the things going around now is um, people are using malware to basically ransom uh, money. They'll they'll shut down like your whole like they'll get in a lot of times through so, uh, social media, and they'll get into your system and shut down your say accounts payable, uh, so you can't bill anybody as a business, and then they will send you a very not so nice message saying, hey, they want this much Bitcoin or this much money to give you access back to your account payables. This is a real problem right now, and a lot of it starts on social media, so you have to be careful out there, so know the security risks. Um, fifth of the seven, again, I told you we'd go through them pretty quickly, so I'm assuming you're doing the reading as well, are brand guidelines, recommendations about the tone of voice. Um, do you want to be friendly, approachable, authentic, honest, conversational? Um, a lot of people say, hmm, tone of voice. I don't understand that. You ever been to a Chick-fil-A? If you've been to a Chick-fil-A, you know tone of voice. They have a very distinct tone of voice. My pleasure. Uh, guidelines to use hashtags, which hashtags to use, which ones not to use, how to use them. Types of images and videos that fit the brand. Colors and font images and specifications of logo use. How can you use it properly? 
all this needs to be laid out in your social media plan. plan. Um, six, roles and responsibilities. Determine who is responsible for specific social media governance tasks. All right. Who is going to oversee this on your team? Designate a company spokesperson responsible for answering all questions um, about your company's social media. You don't want to have eight different people answering because you'll get eight different ways that they answer things. You want to make people make sure um, every employee is responsible for what he or she publishes online. That falls under accountability. Be, be clear that the consequences of employees' actions online, if they step out, what are the consequences for that? You can let them know, that type of thing. Um, next, we're going to move into some examples of these seven things. Again, the seven steps of a policy right here. We're going to look at some plans. Now, there's also a ton of examples in your reading and in the full slide deck that you can access through StuKent and Brightspace. All right, so crisis response plan. So the, this was the social media um, policy plan that we we're talking about first. How do we respond to a crisis? Some excellent, 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 excellent examples in the reading um, that you definitely should be taking a look at. So at some point, companies are bound to have a misstep, face criticism over a company policy. They gotta make mistakes, man. Or a product or a service will fail and the message will go viral. And people love picking on people on social media, especially companies. A social media crisis response plan outlines these steps a company should take when a crisis occurs. So again, remember, the name of this chapter, social media policy and crisis response plans. So we have a social media policy. It has seven parts. Now we're jumping to the second part and a crisis response plan. So when you're doing this assignment, make sure you have both a social media policy and a crisis response plan. So why do you need one? If we're going to screw up social media crisis, again, social media crisis response plan outlines the steps a company should take when a crisis occurs. You develop the crisis plan before it's needed. So it's like a handbook. You just go to it and say, all right, here's what we're going to do. We got some examples coming up, some great ones in the reading as well. This will ensure a quick and appropriate response so you don't get caught on your heels like, what do we do? What do we do? A social media crisis response plan should include your team. Who deals with the social media crisis team? All right, who, who deals with it? What are the people's roles? What are their responsibilities? Uh, you need up-to-date contact information for critical employees so that they can respond in a timely manner. You need guidelines for identifying the type and magnitude of crisis. Is this, you know, for example, a code yellow or a code red or a code green? What is it? All right. You need to come up with your own type plan to where you say, hey, this is a code red and everybody knows there's something bad going on, on social media. And they spring into action because you have a social media crisis plan. Uh, you need a document with pre-approved messages for code yellow issues. OK, so stuff that's like, you know, somebody got on your company's Twitter and dropped a bunch of F-bombs or something. You, you pretty much need to plan for that. Um, unfortunately, it's probably going to happen. Um, how do you escalate and approve processes for code red issues? Code red issues, you need to get upper management involved in. Um, probably the F-bomb thing would be a code red, I guess. Um, you know, something, somebody went political in a, in a business. You never go political in a business. It makes no sense. Uh, the country's basically split right down the middle between left and right. If you say something left, the right half is going to be upset. If you say something right, the left half is going to be upset. So you don't go political. However, during like election years, people get fired up and mistakenly use your company's official Twitter or Facebook or Instagram to say something about one or the other, which upsets the other half of the country, which then puts your business in danger. So those are kind of like code yellow issues. You should pretty much plan those out. Hey, I'm sorry someone got on here that shouldn't have been in here. We are apolitical, you know, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is how we're going to deal with this. Uh, because we made such a mistake, yeah, we're going to give a two-day 30% off coupon for whatever you want to buy in the store. Um, you know, that's like stuff that would be on your pre-approved messages. Now, if someone gets on there and goes on like a profanity laced rant that's probably a code red issue you probably you need to have a plan you know how to shut it down how fast you're going to erase it um you also need to part of your plan is hey we're actually going to monitor our social media just in case something happens um but when an issue like that rises up and it's like more of an issue you need to be able to deal with it quickly so who's going to be involved how are they going to be involved that type of thing um you need in your crisis plan to have a response flowchart for your social media, an internal communication plan, who's notified when, how, um, a copy of the company's social media policy, which you developed in the first half of this um, PowerPoint. So what does this look like? Dun, dun, dun. Here's what it kind of looks like. Social media response flowchart. Okay. Um, it's something positive or neutral. Um, it was neutral. Okay. Was that neutral negative? 
Um, it was positive, did it add value, yes or no? And you can follow this very dense <laughs> flow chart. Your flow chart does not have to look like this. In fact, it would look better if it was a little more clear. Like, hey, one, do this. Two, do that. Yes or no. Three, do this. Yes or no. All right. How do we deal with an unhappy customer? You can make something like this that doesn't have to be this. So utilizing a social media response flow chart um, as seen on this slide or somewhere you know else, you can find them online if you actually search for them. Um, a social media team can evaluate social media posts and provide a response and strategy for each. This one looks a little dense in my opinion, but yeah, hey, see if you can improve upon it. Um, so identifying potential social media crisis, number one, set up a listening procedure. How do you monitor your social media? You should have someone who's like on call that's going to you know, check in every now and then to make sure nothing bad is going on. You need to set up a monitoring system and alerts. Uh, you can do this very easily with either social media as you can actually track what you're posting. Hey, did you know, you, Brenda, and Nick um, are um, in charge of monitoring what's on social media this week. And you can alert that somebody posted. You might want to reach out to Brenda. Nick, was that you? No, it wasn't us. Oh, my goodness, what's going on? So then you set, is this a crisis? You set the pra crisis parameters, and then you watch for data spikes. You can get all kinds of analytics when you do it as a business. All kinds, all right? So how do you respond to a social media crisis? Act and act fast, all right? Here's an example of a crisis response. Um, you need to act and act fast. There's a ton in the full slide set and also in the reading. Use all means to communicate. Get it done. Get it done. Get it done. Get it done. Act fast. Never delete a negative comment. Respond to it in a very polite way, but never delete a negative comment because people will come back even more angry. All right. Now, you can delete an ugly comment or a inappropriate comment. Never delete a negative comment. Come back and allow people to see how you respond to that and do it in a positive way. Hey, I'm sorry you had this experience. Um, I'd love to touch base with you in private messages and see what you know further can be done. Um, please let me, please reach out anytime you you want. Um, that type of thing. Validate validate people's um, feelings. Make sure that you understand that. Hey, you know, again, I'm sorry you, this happened. Um, Taco Bell says something like, and I think we actually have them here coming up. If not, they're in the reading. You know, you definitely shouldn't be licking people's tacos. We have replaced that person, uh, um, and that won't be happening again. Uh, be authentic and empathetic. You need to realize when people get upset, they're upset for a reason. And I'm, I'm ruling out Karens here, okay? Um, be authentic. Let's just let's say people have a legit gripe. Uh, acknowledge the situation. Encourage dialogue. Hey, let's let's talk a little more. It doesn't necessarily have to be in a response on Facebook. It can be in a message. Uh, don't argue with them right there, and don't insult them. It makes you just look bad. You, you go down to someone who's being ugly, you go down to their level, um, you're going to lose, and they're going to beat you based on experience. Turn off scheduled posts when there's a crisis going on. Scheduled posts are great when everything's going all right. Remember, we're making all those calendars, and we schedule all these posts, and we, we had it all running itself. If someone goes sideways, um, you don't want to you know, be selling a... I don't know, some kind of product where a kid got hurt and then 30 minutes later your scheduled post was, hey, we're great for kids. Yikes, right? So turn off your scheduled post if there's a crisis. Just cut that off and reassess. You can always push it back. All right. Um, an example of this was in 2009, two Domino's employees posted some videos of themselves online performing some pretty unsanitary acts with customers' food while on the job. I'm not really going to repeat what was going on here, but if you Google it, you can find it. There's actually, um, in the reading, in the full slide set, there's actually a link to some things about this stuff. So, how did they respond? They acted fast. They used all means to communicate. This act, they did get deleted, but it wasn't on their own website. They encouraged dialogue. They, they, they owned it. They didn't insult anyone, and they turned off the schedule post. Now, American Red Cross is pretty cool. Uh, so this is like the actual Red Cross Twitter. Ryan found two more four packs of dogfish heads minus touch beer. When we drink, we do it right. Get slizzard. Clearly, this was either somebody that hacked them or somebody that wasn't supposed to post it posted. I mean, these American Red Cross are like coming into you after a hurricane. They're talking about getting drunk, right? Um, so uh, you've got... You know, hey, this is clearly a rogue tweet by Red Claws due to my inability to use Hootsuite. I wasn't actually getting slizzard, but just getting excited and now embarrassing. So this is obviously somebody who works with the Red Cross saying, hey, this is a screw up. They acknowledged it. Uh, here's their action. We've deleted the rogue tweet, but rest assured the Red Cross 
is sober and we've confiscated the keys. Okay. Um, then they took it and actually ran with it and partnered with the dogfish um, head beer and came up with a fundraiser. So they made fun. They acknowledged it. Okay. They took care of what was messed up, still had a little fun with it, and then turned it into a doggone fundraiser. Good for them. Uh, FedEx, there were some videos, kind of looks like a like a you know a door cam, um, surveillance cam, whatever, on the edge of the property. This this dude, I'm pretty sure he just throws the box over the fence. Um, so that's not a good look for FedEx. So what do they do? Along with many of you, we've seen a video showing one of our couriers curiously and improperly delivering a package. The other day, as the leader of our pickup and delivery operations across America, I want you to know that I was very upset and embarrassed. Very sorry for the customer's poor experience. This goes directly against everything we have always taught our people and expected them. This is just very disappointing. All right, so they acknowledged it. So we screwed up. All right, this is not what we want to be. However, from the customer's perspective, I am pleased to let you know that the matter has been resolved in a very positive way. We have met with the customer face-to-face. -face. That was your resolution. And they already have a replacement monitor. And it goes, oh, man, that's right. The dude chunked a computer monitor over the fence. What do you think was going to happen? Uh, I'm sure things shattered. They've accepted our apology and say that they are fully satisfied with what we've done in response to this unacceptable delivery. They've made it clear, though, that they would prefer not to have been identified in any way, so they want to remain anonymous. Cool. Respect that. You know, honor that. And in this case, as always, with customers, we fully expect, respect their privacy. I know you recognize this absolutely does not represent the professionalism and dedication of the 290,000 people who work at uh, FedEx. <sighs> One bad egg, man. That guy, I guarantee you, that wasn't on FedEx's social media, but somebody who's wearing a FedEx uniform, somebody puts that on social media because they captured it on their security camera. It's a bad look for FedEx, man. you got to respond. you got to respond the way they just did. They nailed it. They did all of those things. If you look at it, they acknowledge the situation. They encourage dialogue with the affected parties. They didn't argue. They didn't insult them. They took care of them. I'm sure they turned off. I'm sure they turned off uh, scheduled posts. Because what if they had something that's like, "Hey, our packages are flying in." Yeah, yeah, they are. All right, so turn off the scheduled posts. All right, so FedEx had a nice little response there. So. What about the aftermath of a uh, social media crisis? Um, your team will want to assess the following question. What was the crisis? You need a debrief. All right, what all happened? How did we find out about it? Was it quickly? How quickly did we find about it? Was our crisis team A, in place and notified quickly? What specific actions were taken? How long did it take to respond to the crisis? Was the response received well by the public? If not, how could the response be improved upon? You always learn from a social media crisis. You always learn in business from a crisis, period. Okay, what, what was it? How did we respond? What went well, what went not so well? How can we be better for the next time? Because if you want to be a successful business or working successfully in business, you're going to have crisis come up. So always be learning, all right? Uh, were the employees notified? If so, how? Some other plans, some other things you can ask here. Hey, did the plan that we put in place run smoothly? Do we have a plan? Did each member of the crisis team perform the assigned duties? Is there any way we can tweak it? Um, how well did the response plan work? Could the crisis have been avoided? If so, how should social media crisis plan be modified? It should always be a living document and always change it. Okay, that's the crisis response plan in social media. And keep in mind. Social media policies up front, set the expectation up front, and then have a plan for when things go sideways. Thanks so much for listening.